Welcome to Linda's TV show. If it is your first time of stopping by, you like the channel and the video, please subscribe and put on your notification bell so that you will be able to know when I upload a new video. In this channel, I bring to you information across the globe, what is happening in the world, especially Nigeria. So after watching the video, your opinion, your contribution is highly needed. Do it constructively in the comment section. As we are going to watch this video together, yes, I'm watching it together with you. Then later, we'll come to the comment section to discuss about it. Remain blessed as we watch. Progressive Congress, Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu has come under fire on social media for donating 50 million naira to support the victims of the central market in Katsina State affected by an inferno which engulfed the market on Monday. The national leader who visited the governor of Katsina State, Aminu Masari, on Wednesday said the purpose of the visit was to sympathize with the victims of the fire and promote unity. However, some Nigerians have tagged the meeting and the 50 million naira donation as politically motivated and have also accused him of neglecting the victims of various fire incidents in Lagos where he was a governor. Let's take a quick listen to what he had to say before we take some reaction. Any condition take it as temporary and work as love, peace and harmony. Cannot but unite ourselves. Promote peace and well, you know, a lot of people are upset because obviously they're stating that, you know, his charity is beginning abroad instead of home because of the various fire incidents that had happened from last year to this year in Lagos. Let's take a quick tweet from Sadiq Tade, who wrote, Tinubu didn't donate a cabo after Shasha crisis. He didn't donate when Akensaw happened. He was mute during a Buleado incident, but was quick to rush down to Kassina to drop 15 million naira. We can't dictate how he intends to spend his money, but his posturing is too obvious, trying to satisfy a region. So this is the rhetoric we're seeing, Tundu. Well, you know I don't care what anybody does with their life, with their right? Life. As long as it doesn't yes. bother anybody, like, like, you like do whatever you like with your yes. money. However, I must say in this case, it only, with the backdrop of all the agitations that we have at the moment of Yoruba people wanting the Southwest to be self-determining and what have you. It reminds me of just the impression, well, it's not even an impression, it's the reality that a Yoruba man cannot be president of Nigeria without going up north to seek permission. And if you don't, you will die. That is just the fact of the matter. So it looks to me like Tinubu's donation is a reflection of that reality, sad, unacceptable reality of having to go there and kowtow and seek favor for them to have to sort of sanction your presidential ambition. And that is just should not be the case. Every Nigerian has the right to contest in this country. It says a lot that that donation was made when it was made and where it was made. Well said, Tundu. Dr. Bati. Well, I have a slightly different opinion. You know, <clears throat> as we move uh, closer to uh, the 2023 general election, people will read motive into just about anything. People will try to play politics with just about anything. I mean, what uh, I think we should stress in this regard is empathy, compassion. The uh, national leader of the APC, Ashwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu, I mean, he visited Katsina State uh, to see the governor and to empathize with the people. I think it's something you can take on the surface of it. And he donated 50 million to the affected uh, persons well, I mean, that's his choice. Uh, I will not go as far as <coughs> reading political motive to it. But other people who feel that way, well, I don't think you can crucify a man for identifying uh, with people who are in uh, distress. The more, uh, and it was not the only person that went there. The federal government also sent a delegation led by the Attorney General of the Federation, Abuba Kamalami, uh, to also empathize with the people. And the federal government has also said uh, it will provide support uh, for those people. But the bigger picture will have to be the inferno at the market. Now, on too many occasions, either in the East or in Lagos, markets are always going up in flames in, in Nigeria. Now, is it possible for some, some, some researchers, some, you know, a department of government to investigate why this is so and why our markets can become safe? Uh, whether it's, uh, sometimes you hear it's electrical appliances or some uh, something going up in flames. But the losses, if you calculate it in terms of losses, in terms of the anguish 
uh, on the part of the persons who are affected. It's quite a lot. Uh, that's one point. The second point is that in this uh, Katsina market incident, we've been told so far, uh, more than 48 hours later, uh, that the cause of the inferno is yet unknown, right? And then the fire service habitually, characteristically, arrived late, and they couldn't make any difference. The fire just raged on. And these are the things that happen all the time when we have these uh, accidents. And I think that the fire service have made the point here before. You know, it's over 100 years old, but it's also, it's also one of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, most uh, underserved departments of uh, government. And if there's going to be fire every time here and there, then maybe we, we should look at the fire department and how the safety connection of it, uh, and in terms of the service that that department provides, you know, can be addressed. As for what uh, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed does with his money, uh, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed, you know, as to what he does with his money, once uh, anybody's money is not missing, and it's not as if, uh, you know, there is anything uh, unwholesome about it, I, he can donate his money to whoever he likes. Yeah, like Whether there is a politics said. behind it or not, that well, should not be uh, uh, my business. I don't want to have a dick <laughs> over another man's, uh, how another man spends his money. <laughs> Well, absolutely Fine. not. But, but can that's you, not but the can conversation. You, can you, it's as not, a Yoruba yes. man in today's Nigeria, if you want to be president, <clears throat> can you be successful without going to Kauta up north? That's my issue. Well, I mean, the, from that's the story the that I read, he didn't go there to campaign. I'm not talking about Tinubu. Eh? It's a he general, knows she's, he's, she's just oh, a general. Okay. Yes. Well, as a you know, the, the, the principle the of it is that we, we all that. need each other when it comes to politics at the national level. Can anybody from the north become president without coming to the southwest to also mobilize for support. That's just the uh, real politic. That's the way it is. Rufa, your take and we will see story. more, you know, movement across regions. You can't even be president if you don't also talk to people in the southeast. Yeah, like when you win an election and it's a no because the powers that be don't want you to be president. <laughs> anyway, Rufa. <laughs> uh, for me, you can't tell a man how to spend his money, but there's also something I call fairness, even in charity. Uh, all of a sudden, yeah, I know Paul Ahmed Tinubu doesn't know the political position, but all of a sudden, maybe because it's politics or something, we are seeing people going to make donations in the north as though there are no problems in their own backyard here. The first one I saw was a governor. I think a fire incident happened in Sokoto. The governor went ahead to Sokoto to make donations while people had not been paid in the states. And now we are seeing this. I don't have any problems with Bola Ahmed Tinubu giving his money to people. And I empathize with people in Katsina. But for me, I also want to ask questions that can we also, by extension, put small things in a pot for those that are reeling from the Abule Ado fire, for those that are reeling from other gas pipeline incidents in other parts of Lagos, to create soccer, I still know people that have been displaced due to the Ikeja cantonment bombing that happened many years ago on the 27th of January. Can we also put small things in a pot for those people as we're giving to other parts? I know I can't fault a man for how he spent his money, but I'm just saying, can we spread this goodwill around? Well, at this rate, the and next time a Yoruba uh, person goes to attend a wedding, and either in Kano or anywhere in the north, we'll say he's going for that wedding for political no, reasons. No, 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 no this Dr. is Dr. completely Dr. different. Dr. Wedding is different from a large I'm donation. Just, <laughs> I'm, just saying, I'm just saying that people too have suffered market fires too in parts of the south here. That's and if you're giving to people in the north, we can also balance it to say, okay, even if it's 20 million, give to the people in the south. So it cuts across all. And secondly, you raise even a more vital issue. That how can we prevent these fires? It's the way our markets are built. Our markets are built in a very claustrophobic manner that you can hardly get away around. There are no fire blankets. There are no fire measures taken. Our markets are a disaster waiting to happen. But at the same time, when you go one step further and build a modern market, people can't move into them because of the cost. So we need to rethink our markets in right. this part of the world. Another point is that no one knows truly if the national leader had donated to these fire incidents. Maybe he had made a silent donation. Nobody knows. So at this point, it's a speculation if he has or has not donated. Um, yeah, he might himself. have. He might have, and he might have been silent.
The Yoruba Council of Elders on Wednesday disowned the call for secession by activist Sunday Adeyemo, popularly known as Sunday Igboho, who last week declared a Yoruba nation. The Secretary General of the Council, in an interview, said the activist does not represent the Yoruba people in his call for secession. He added that Yoruba people had invested so much in Nigeria's formation and unity, and so it will be unwise for them to seek secession. In the meantime, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kanu, has said that the group will support the One Million Man March proposed by Yoruba self-determination groups in the Southwest. In a tweet on Wednesday, the IPOB leader wrote that the group will also stand with all oppressed ethnic groups in Nigeria. Meanwhile, the One Million Man March that was to take place across Yoruba-speaking states we're talking about the uh, claim by uh, Sunday Boho, actually even saying that monarchs were behind his secession plan. I'm glad that this group has disowned uh, you know, his claim for a, a sovereign Yoruba nation. I think it is important that they came out to say that. And um, it, it just renews the hope for Nigeria because they also said that our diversity is what keeps us strong. That to me is yeah. the best thing about Nigeria and yeah. being Nigerian that we're just so different. It's beautiful. If harnessed correctly, if everybody feels that they are on a level playing field, mm -hmm. if all grievances are addressed, it would never need to even resort to talk of secession. Because I don't know about anybody else, but a peaceful, blood-free secession is actually quite rare. Look at South Sudan. Yes, they've been recognized by the United Nations. It's all going very well. Until you see that they're days away from famine in 2021. Until you recall that almost 400,000 people died. Who are those that are going to die? Hopefully not anybody in any of our families. So what we're talking about when we talk about secession is a lot more involved than we might think on the surface. What Nigeria needs to do is to be a country that works for everybody, that is fair to everybody, where nobody feels that they're under the boots of some kind of overlords. That's really the issue. Mm -hmm. So that needs to be addressed. Yes, I do agree that Yoruba people have invested a lot in Nigeria, as have other ethnic nationalities in Nigeria. And that's what has kept Nigeria together, and hopefully Nigeria will be great as a result. Yes, I also read another story about the IPOB leader, the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kanu, who says that they were going to be behind anyone, any group who's um, been marginalized in Nigeria. Dr. Anyway, the uh, basic point is that many Nigerians are aggrieved, and they express their grievances in different ways. There are persons who insist that we need to renegotiate Nigeria. There are persons, groups that say, well, they would rather go out of Nigeria. And there are persons who say, look, let us sit down and talk and redesign Nigeria and correct what uh, some uh, commentators on the subject used to refer to or still refer to as the mistake of 1914, which is the uh, amalgamation. Now, and there are those who do not even want any discussion at all. But in this particular context, I had made the point here before that the general position usually taken in the Southwest has been one of self-determination, mm -hmm. not secession. But now you have uh, Chief Sondi Adeyemo, also known as Igbo, the other day, talking about secession. The only person that I, that I think was uh, at that event who supported him, I guess, was uh, Professor Banji Akintoye, former leader of the uh, Yoruba World Congress, and they're also leader of uh, Ilanomo Yoruba. You have many of these groups. You have the uh, self-determination groups. You have the Odua Youth Congress. You have, okay, they are grouped. They want Nigeria to be renegotiated. But Chief Kuli Olajide's point, and as the uh, Secretary General of the Yoruba Council of Elders, that's the person you were uh, quoting. His point is that, look, if Sunday Ibo says he wants the Yoruba to secede, that's his personal desire, and that he does not represent the view of every Yoruba person, or the majority of Yorubas. Right. And we've made this point before. And he also said it is not true that there has been a meeting of traditional rulers in uh, Yoruba land saying that Yoruba people want to secede. And that if there was such a meeting, there is no way he, as head of the uh, Yoruba Council of Elders, will not know about it. Afeni Ferry is talking about restructuring. He's not talking about secession. So you have a multiplicity of views. What should not happen is a situation whereby one or two persons or three persons want to impose their view on a whole race. It should be possible for those who want to remain in Nigeria to remain Correct. in Nigeria. And I think uh, Chief uh, Kunle Olajide spoke for such people. Now, there is another essay that I will recommend. It's titled Oduduwa Republic Against Secession. 
written by uh, Chief uh, Duro Onobule. Chief Duro Onobule's argument is even far more robust than uh, that of uh, Chief Kunle Olajide. And Chief Onobule is a, a veteran journalist. He's a very uh, senior citizen, so he knows what he's talking about. And he was saying in that article that most of the Yorubas that he has seen, they are saying Buhari is not known in Nigeria well. Uh, Buhari is a problem. Buhari, so he, he raised the question, so are we going to, will Yoruba people leave uh, uh, Nigeria because of Buhari? By 2023, Buhari will no well, longer be president. Yeah. So you cannot hold one man, uh, one man's administration, uh, turn it into a basis for calling for, for secession. But I, I see a dangerous trend whereby, you know, people don't want to debate, they don't want to discuss. If you say anything that they do not agree with, they will start abusing you. And that anti-intellectual uh, approach uh, to, to public debate, I think, is, is condemnable. Uh, 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 Professor Akitoye himself says, oh, this session will be intellectually robust. It will be intellectually driven. Now, how do you drive whatever objective you have if people cannot even talk? And now the canon says uh, you will come and join Yorubas to do a one million match. Well, I don't think there is a consensus yet on that one million no, match. No, there's none. It was supposed to take place yesterday. yesterday yeah. And it's now been postponed until uh, further notice. Everybody should just be careful. If I, I can, uh, Olajide says people should be patient. Do not say because you don't like the president administration, then you take a decision and you want to impose it on others. No. All right. Said, and I've been calling for unity all this while because our best bet is we will still come back and sit on the table. So let's have that conversation now. It's a great point you raised, Tundu, about South Sudan. John Garange fought for South Sudan so much. He had two lieutenants, Rick Marsha and Salbakia. Once John Garange died and they granted South Sudan independence, See the way South Sudan is. It's now a faction between Rek Masha and Salvakia. Everybody will always push for its own personal interest. And that's why we should be careful. And divisions will always bring more divisions. I can give you another instance. The IRA, over the 70s, after Sunday, Bloody Sunday, they fought so hard. They even went ahead to throw a bomb on 10 Downing Streets. But guess what happened? After all the fight by the IRA, they still had to come to that table and discuss at the Good Friday Agreement in 98. So we need to come back and discuss and have an intellectual and robust conversation. We can't afford to throw the country away. All right. We want a country that is fair for all. But I keep asking, like the Yorubas will say, is the solution to a headache cutting off the head? It's never been the case. So let's talk. I know Nigeria has not been fair to everybody. And that's why I keep calling on leadership to stand tall. Let's even talk to all these agitating parts. Because we are better together. And when we keep talking about division succession, it is when you divide, you will know that Egbaz and Ijebumen can't sit on a table together without fighting themselves. The, the it is that time you, you will the know that there are divisions war. between the Igbos and the Delta yes. Igbos. The Nigerian civil war was three years. The Yoruba civil war lasted 91 years. So that should tell you something. Good point. Uh, Dr. Barty. Well, there are some Nigerians who insist that the war has not ended. That's all I have for you guys on what's trending today. Hi. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time or first day of coming across my YouTube channel or seeing my face, you are highly welcome. Please be comment to my next channel. My name is Linda Chukwezi. It's coming.